Right now, we have enough hobbies. Enough hobbies, Kristen. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and I come at you every week. I sit down and share what I've been making, primarily knitting. We do a lot of quilting, a lot of sewing. Lately, there has been quite a lot of crochet and spinning. And this, my friends, is going to be a tiny but mighty episode for you because <laughs> I, are you ready for it? finished spinning my hand spun. We've got hand spun, it's all done. So yes, if you've been tuning in for the past few weeks, I think about the past month or so, I have been spinning on some Rolags from The Woolly Witch, a wonderful shop on Etsy. I will link to her shop down below, but she is known for her Rolags. And if you're not familiar with what a Rolag is, it's a type of fiber prep, if you will. So the fiber comes in many different forms. They come in bumps, they come in bats, they come in poonies, and they come in Rolags, to name a few. And this this fiber right here came from a Rolag. So it, essentially they're just big rolled up. They look, they look like big fluffy caterpillars. Uh, that's the best way that I can describe them. And Rolags are what I spun this glorious, beautiful hand spun out of. And yeah, guys, it's been a hot minute since, since I finished any hand spun. And I have to tell you, it feels, it feels really good. I cannot wait to start spinning some more fiber, which I will share with you in a little bit at the end of the episode. Um, but yes, in, in case you haven't gathered, this episode is going to be about spinning. So if that is your jam, gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. As I mentioned, this fiber is by The Woolly Witch, and I purchased four, a total of four ounces, which typically will yield about your average 100 gram skein of yarn. So I basically spun two ounces onto one bobbin and another two ounces on another bobbin and then plied all those singles together to get a two ply. I wanna say this turned out to be a relatively consistent fingering to DK weight yarn. I mean, it's, again, I am by no means a technical spinner. I don't know why I feel the need to <laughs> express that every time I talk about spinning, but yes, I am not a technical spinner. For the most part, I am very happy with whatever comes off my, my wheel and this is no exception. And it looks like I have spun, it, yeah, again, a lot of thick and thin, but for the most part, it is a con relatively consistent fingering to DK weight yarn. And I should also mention the type of fiber that this is spun out of, and nothing fancy, just 100% superwash merino. And there's some, a little bit of Stellina in there. And yeah, just really beautiful shades of chocolate brown and little hints of violet purple in here with, again, a little hint, a very subtle hint of Stellina, which, which always makes me so happy. I did not weigh this actually, so I should, let me see. Do -do -do. I got my scale. Ah. Guys, this scale has been in my life forever and I purchased it from Ikea years ago, years ago. I wanna say maybe like 10 years ago. Let me see, get my little handy dandy cart over here. Boop -ba doo Okay, so I'm getting three and three quarter ounces, uh, which is to be expected. I know I said that I ordered four ounces, but whenever you're spinning fiber, there's bound to be some fiber loss, if you will, while you're spinning. And you know, it either gets tangled or, tangled or whatever, so you just have to prepare to lose a little bit of weight. So my advice, if you are purchasing fiber and you have the option to choose um, how much, I would go a little bit above four ounces if you can, uh, just to anticipate losing some fiber in, in the process of spinning it. So yes, when it came to plying my singles together, I ran into a little bit of a snafu. If you are a member of my YouTube channel, you might have seen the vlog where I had had just the slightest meltdown <laughs> because... Okay, long story short, I had spun all of my singles onto these Acreworks bobbins, and these are really cool. They're, they're 3D printed. They make compatible bobbins for all sorts of spinning wheels, and they had one for my lend room. So several years back, maybe six years ago, I picked these up for my Lendrum DT and yeah, they've, they've held up really well and they're so fun and colorful. Um, however, I don't know if over the years, uh, the 3D printed aspect part, this part right here, this little disc, I don't know if this material loses integrity over the course of time because when I went to put my, um, the, the pink one into my Lazy Kate, it, it broke. Okay, this one is flowing freely, so why isn't this one? Oh. This one. <coughs> 
So not only did that happen, but if you can imagine, my it was loaded with singles and all of my singles started to unravel on the side and I, I nearly cried guys. It was, I freaked out, but I did manage to salvage it. I'm not gonna get into detail. I did, again, for members, there's a whole vlog on there. I will say that I used my woolly winder. That was, that was a, a lifesaver. It wasn't easy, but with the help of my woolly winder, I was able to salvage my singles and, and press on and get this done. But not only did my bobbin break, but the other wrench that got thrown into my wheel, if you will, pun totally unintended, was that I purchased this Lazy Kate from the Woolery and clearly I did not read the description on the Woolery's website because after it arrived and it was time for me to start plying my singles, um, I realized that this cannot accommodate the size of my bobbins. This is meant for smaller bobbins. So yeah, I was kind of dead in the water when it came to plying up my singles. After I posted the vlog, a couple of viewers mentioned or suggested that I make a Lazy Kate out of a shoebox, which duh, duh, Kristen, why didn't I think of that? Such a brilliant idea because I did, I did make a shoebox Lazy Kate eons ago when I would ply my singles from drop spindles. Same thing applies with, with regular bobbins and that's exactly what I did and here we are. Uh, this is just a regular shipping box that I got from Amazon. I drilled two holes on either side, like so. And then on the inside, just using some straight wooden knitting needles, you know, you just pop one in and like so. Once you got them loaded in there, it, they just spin and it works perfectly. Look at that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And it served me so well and I was able to ply up, clearly I was able to ply up all my singles successfully. Once my singles were all plied, I got out my Nitty Naughty and this one is also by, let me see, oh this one's by Kromsky. Honestly, I wish I had a larger Nitty Naughty. Uh, this one I believe is more geared towards uh, skeining up mini skeins, but it did the job. I managed to get all of my single, my plied singles onto it, um, but that's also why I can't really twist it into um, a, a skein. Like right now, this is the hank form. I believe this is what we call a hank of yarn, and then when you twist it up into, you know, a little twisty, twisty thing, that's what you call a skein, or skein, 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 potato, potato. But anyway, this will do, because I have a funny feeling I'm going to be using this in the very near future. I have been browsing Ravelry for potential patterns to use this yarn with, and um, the Pink Velvet Pullover by Andrea Mauri, it's a, pa it's a sweater pattern that's been out for quite some time now, and it's been on my Ravelry queue. Um, you know, I just haven't really come across the right yarn for it, but looking at this, I feel like the color work yoke would be really great in showcasing this yarn. This in combination with some yarn from my stash over here, I am thinking, again, I talked about this on the Monday Waffle to members, but I think this yarn and this yarn, this is Fox Hill Fiber, uh, which I picked up from Brianbeck last year. And I think these two yarns would play really, really nicely together. This is the color work and this is the main body. I do have an, an SQ's worth of this yarn and I just think, yeah, it's gonna go so nicely together. Um, because both, this even has like a very hand spun type of quality to it. And I think because it's so soft, this is so soft, it's just gonna be a match made in heaven. So yeah, TBD, but I think that's, that's the future of this yarn. And I am, yeah, very, very excited about it. See, I was gonna sit down and do a whole, like not, not tutorial, but demonstration of me spinning and talking to you while I'm, I'm plying up my singles. But again, my, my bobbin broke and my bobbins weren't fitting into the Lazy Kate, all hell kind of broke loose and I just kind of scrapped it. But thankfully I did get some B-roll that I can hopefully sprinkle in and uh, add some visuals to what I'm, I'm talking about. And that my friends is the very first hand spun that I have spun in quite some time. And I am very, very pleased with the results. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, yeah, I, you know, again, I'm not a technical spinner by any means. These videos where I'm showing you how I go about spinning, 
applying and all that all that jazz is not meant to be a tutorial but hopefully it kind of gives you a little idea of what it's like to spin and just taking things one step at a time not focusing on being perfect and just enjoying the process enjoying the journey if you will and maybe you feel inspired to try spinning yourself be it on a spinning wheel or a drop spindle um, i'm going to combine these videos into a little playlist so you know you can refer back to them if you you know if, if you're if you are picking up drop spindling or wheel spinning and you want to you know see how I do it again um but yeah guys again it feels so great to be spin spinning again uh, and now that this one is finished of course it's time to start another spinning project so <laughs> I already have the, fi the fiber picked out and you guys are going to be a little you might be a little shocked I'm a little shocked because this fiber is so out of my comfort zone when it comes to color but I cannot resist it was so pretty and I got to support another fiber artist that I have not purchased fiber or yarn from in a very long time but I really do love her her aesthetic her you know stuff and um Anyway, that is by Spun Right Round, and look at this. This is amazing. Um, it's, I don't know how well you can see this, actually. So I, you know, I will take it out of its wrapping just for you guys. Um, and also because I might, I might have at it tomorrow. But this is super, super pretty fiber. Look at that. Oh, my God. Guys, can we? It's, it's like a pillow. It's a pillow of fluff. Um, and there, this is what you call a bat. So again, my finished hand spun was spun out of Rolex. This is a fiber bat where you toss a bunch of fiber into a drum carter. If you've watched The Last Homely House, if you watched her most recent spinning episode, in the beginning of the video, she is throwing fiber into a drum carter and it's, it looks like a lot of fun. That is a rabbit hole I do not need to dive down right now <laughs> because <laughs> drum carters, I imagine, are quite an investment. And yeah, we, we have right now we have enough hobbies. Enough hobbies, Kristen. We don't need a drum carter. It looks like a lot of fun, and the the pr the the bats that you can create these are art. These are works of art. It's so pretty. But um, again, the colors in here are very bright very out of my comfort zone i mean there's some mauves in here i love there's something about like pinks and yellows like bright yellows and soft pinks that i absolutely love and then there's like shocks and magenta in there um so because it's so shocking one of the best ways to kind of tone down bright neon colors is to add a neutral to it so um, when I purchased my Lazy Kate from the Woolery, I also purchased some neutral fiber and this is what I'm going to ply it with. So this, my friends, is Corydale Top, 250 grams of it, and equally, I mean, it does have a little bit of tooth to it, but so does this. And I think they're just going to play really nicely together, um, all spun up. The plan is to spin singles out of this fiber and then spin a separate bobbin of singles with this fiber and then fly the two together. And I feel like that it'll create a really nice, fun, toned down, preferably marl. But it's definitely going to have a lot of texture to it because I don't know if you can see these little neps in here. Yeah, there's even ribbon. Ribbon, there's string. Maybe that string doesn't need to be there, but anyway, Stellina, I mean, yeah, there's everything and it's glorious. As I mentioned, I don't know how thick or thin this is going to spin up, but given the fact that there's a lot of texture in here, I think it's going to be a pretty thick yarn, anywhere from DK to worsted weight, which I would be surprised because my default is to spin fingering and DK weight yarn. For some reason, I always have trouble spinning thicker yarns. Again, not a technical spinner. I need a little practice when it comes to that. But anyway, we shall see. Whatever these grow up to be, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be happy with it. So again, a rather quick, short episode for you. It's been another crazy week, but I always look forward to sitting down and chatting with you. If you're new here, hello, welcome. Uh, if you haven't already and you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and subscribe down below. Thank you again so much as always for hanging out with me. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.